Right now on Uniquely American, we take a look at American sports and how our very own high school has taken part. American football and basketball are both concepts that originated right here in the U.S. And along with these sports comes a variety of uniquely American traditions and experiences. People are now more eager than ever to take part in these activities, especially after missing out last year due to COVID-19. Coming up, you'll get a look at Homestead's own football experience and how high schoolers today are taking part. Football definitely isn't the same without its fans. Learn about Homestead's enthusiastic student section and the group's efforts to get together and show support for our athletes. Tailgating has been bringing together fans before games for decades. See how Homestead took part in this classic tradition this year. Homestead's media team works hard to film and stream every home football and basketball game. Get a glimpse into how these high school students are able to create award-winning live stream productions. Construction is ongoing at Homestead High School. Take a look at the plans for the new and improved gymnasium and athletic facilities. And we take a look into the behind the scenes of Homestead basketball and their chance to go to the Hall of Fame Classic Tournament. All of this coming up. Every student wants to have that classic high school experience. A main component of this is getting to attend the football games that are held almost every week at the beginning of the school year. As soon as the season starts up in the fall, this event is an attraction at Homestead that you can't miss. Hundreds of smiling faces light up the stands at Homestead High School as students from all grade levels get together to cheer on their home team. Football players are on the field and cheerleaders face the stands, bringing in positive spirits to the stadium. High school football is a huge event with so many different people playing their own part. In terms of going to games, I mean, it's open to anybody and we always encourage all grade levels to come. I mean, football is kind of like our modern gladiator. It's fast, it's intense. I think it has become an extension of the high school experience because it's something social to do with friends. Fall weather is really nice. And again, it's something to do on a fall evening on a Friday night. Whether you're involved with the sport itself or whether you are participating in, in the student section or part of the band or whatever might be playing at those events, I think that all enhances the whole education experience. Little did we know that all of this was about to change. Activities were missed during the heat of the COVID-19 pandemic and this left our stadium stands silent. You played basically in front of an empty set of stands and so it lacked a little bit of the intensity I think that we, we experienced when there's fans cheering us on or against us one way or the other, you know, so I think that was all part of it. I mean, we really missed having fans in the stands. Um, we know that administrators have to work during those times, maybe a little bit more than we did last year when there were no fans, but it's really fun to see good crowds at a lot of our games. After everything we missed out on last year, we can be even more grateful to have these social events back on the calendar. The experience from the football perspective was great. The student section was huge again, and to see that kind of participation it was a lot of fun. Really the social aspect is, is what I think brings a lot of people there. It's watching your classmates and watching your friends perform on the big stage, per se, uh, under the lights. Home football games are one of the most well-attended events at the school, and students have so many different aspects to look forward to. During a regular Friday night game, you may be grabbing a steaming hot pretzel from the concession stand, or even watching the band perform at halftime. But homecoming is an event that happens once a year, drawing in large crowds of all ages. A homecoming experience should be for others, past students, graduates, former players to come back and enjoy uh, being together again and, and watching a game together. I think that's the idea. Obviously, we've missed out on our dance uh, the last couple years, so that was a part of the homecoming experience that we've missed, but I'm hoping to get that back in years to come. Since missing out on many activities last year due to COVID, Homestead is grateful to have one of its most highly attended events back to normal this year. It's time we bring this part of the high school experience back to Homestead football. Along with all these other traditions, one aspect of football that gets a lot of attention at home games is the student section. Nada Dehook brings you a story about the impact they bring to people on and off the field. Throughout the years, Homestead has gained a reputation for having one of the largest student sections in the state. Due to COVID, schools put a limit on who could attend the games, making the student section smaller than normal. 
but this year the gates to the football field were open again for all to attend. Whether that's cheering on their own school or distracting the opposing team, the student section plays an essential role in football. Hearing the crowds cheer them on motivates all the players on the field to push for a win every game. Student section is a group of homestead students that go out every Friday night and bring a whole lot of energy, um, hype up the team, hype up others in the crowd. But these groups of students in the stands are more than just regular fans of the popular sport. The student section participates in a variety of activities as well, whether that includes painters, raising money for a cause during the game, doing push-ups after a touchdown, or screaming chants to bring up the spirits in the stands. Their energy is needed in every football game. Every week there is a theme for the game, whether that be blackout, camo, Hawaiian night, and more. Themes are normally used to unite a student section, unite our student section, I should say. We normally have a Red for Riley night, which is in support of the Riley Dance Marathon. Carol games will always do a blackout theme that kind of clashes with Carol's neon theme. Another part of the student section that has become popular over the past few years are the hype videos for each game. A group of student section leaders promote the theme for the game that week, while also encouraging students to come out and support the team. Overall, one of the main reasons why American football has become so popular comes from the excitement and spirit of the student section. I'm Nada Dehook. Thank you, Nada. It is clear that Homestead's student section is much more than just an audience. And now Carly Flanagan joins us in the studio to give us a look at Homestead's take on tailgating this year. Carly. Thanks, Jenna. And tailgating is a widely known American tradition for football games. The history of tailgating dates all the way back to the start of the Civil War. In 1861, civilians gathered in Washington, D.C. to watch the first battle of the Bull Run and cheer on their team, the Union or the Confederates. Years later, after tailgating became more common, it became the star of the show at the very first football game. The game was Rutgers University versus Princeton University. Since then, tailgating has made a name for itself, becoming a popular trend in the fall before any football game. Homestead took part in this tradition in August when they hosted the tailgate and tour event. With last year marking the 50-year anniversary of Homestead and the construction progress being set in motion, a tailgate was a necessary event to host. It was to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Homestead High School and to kick off the first football game of the season. And so we thought, what better way to reconnect all the alumni than through a football tailgate? Um, so we invited everyone over before kickoff. Um, we had hot dogs and burgers, chips and drinks, and we allowed them to come and enjoy a meal and meet up with their friends. And if they had time and interest, they could come in the building and get a tour with our student ambassadors. Part of the football tradition is tailgating, so students could hang out before the game, enjoy some music and food and drinks, and then head into the game and cheer on the Spartans. At the event, Homestead's very first football team from 1970 was represented, and the whole school honored all alumni. Student ambassadors of Homestead played a huge role in setting up, proving that students from all classes love to support Homestead and bring everyone together. This isn't a traditional event. It was, it was something special um, that we wanted to host to recognize our alumni. The, the students had a, a really um, crucial part to all of this. They were the ones that led the, the tours, and so they led the alumni through the hallways. They pointed out what things used to be, you know, where the old study hall room used to be or where the, the senior hallway used to be. Our student ambassadors were also hosts at the tailgate. They helped serve, they helped clean up, they helped greet, and so um, they were the ones that, that made the event kind of come to life. The event was a clear success and a great way to honor the past players. Tailgating remains prevalent in football history and since tailgating tour, many families have begun small tailgates in the football parking lots to bring the community together and get excited for the games. Jenna. Thank you, Carly. And it's very exciting to see how even high school football has been attracting fans to tailgate before the big event. Especially with COVID-19 canceling in-person activities last year, getting a live broadcast of our sports teams became vital. Nisha Lalria is in now to give you a behind the scenes look at Homestead Live and how they provide great coverage that you can watch from anywhere. 
All of Homestead High School's varsity sports events are broadcasted live on YouTube. With modern technology, the standard of live sports broadcasting is becoming the new norm for many high schools around the state. Homestead Live, a subgroup of Homestead Media, is a group of highly talented individuals who spend all their time after school preparing for the next live sports event. I'm the color commentator for the girls' basketball games, and then I also do the boys' home games, and that means I just analyze the game as it's going on and help out Anthony, who's my play-by-play, -play, when he's not talking. For Homestead Live, I do a lot of announcing. I was the color broadcaster during the football season, and I'm the play-by-play -play broadcaster for girls' basketball. I also help out with main cam, but the main stuff I do is sports announcing. Despite offering students a unique perspective on attending sporting events, this experience offers future broadcasters the opportunity to test the waters the world of sports broadcasting has to offer. I think that this has definitely led to me seeing myself in the future doing stuff with sports broadcasting and as of now that's what I want to do in college so that's what I want to pursue and this program really just provides a great opportunity to pursue that path. I think this program has definitely showed me a lot of the things that you can do in relation to sports media and that's what I plan on majoring in going into college. I just have a lot of fun with it and because of Homestead and the program as a whole I really feel like I've got an opportunity to get exposure at such a young age. The live streaming of sporting events has brought a new perspective to the way we view high school sports. It adds another layer of professionalism and it also grants others the experience to watch games they may not have had the chance to watch in the past. Especially while we are still in the era of COVID-19, Homestead Live is giving people around the state the chance to watch some of the best teams in action. I'm Nisha Lalaria. Homestead Live would not be possible without our stadium and gymnasiums. Cora Shaw got a chance to talk to the Sachs building representative to learn more about the construction progress on our athletic facilities. A huge aspect of American sports is high school football and basketball. But in order to bring their A game, every team needs a stadium to use. Over the next few years, Homestead is undergoing major construction, including the addition of brand new spaces for the sports teams to use. One of the most exciting sports-related additions to the new building will be a brand new competition gymnasium. The new gymnasium will be a one-tier surround-type setting that will hold up to 3,000 spectators and students. Between home games and competitions, the space can be converted into three full-size practice floors. In the grand scheme of the five-phase Homestead construction project, the basketball arena is grouped into phase two. The timeline for the, the whole project and for everything to be complete so through phases five would be the summer of 2024. So we're two and a half years from that at this point in time. And the new gymnasium and the auditorium are in phase two. So the gymnasium part of it is still scheduled to be done this summer. So it'll be ready for the next school year uh, for the 2022-23 school year. Although we are not getting a brand new football stadium with the new building, construction on the new outdoor sports building is underway. This building will accommodate Homestead Athletic participants by providing a designated space for locker rooms, team meeting spaces, and coaches' offices during the season. Because of this added building, outdoor sports participants won't even have to step foot in the main school building. The wait for the construction project will be worth it when future Spartans are able to fully take in the American High School sports experience in the brand new facilities. Thanks, Cora. The Indiana High School Athletic Association is the arbiter of interscholastic competition among public and private high schools in Indiana. The officials in the IHSAA have a very important job of making the calls at every sporting event. What they do is the most important task of every game and is much more complex than one might think. So I actually have a, a few roles. I officiate on, to the, on the field for baseball games for high school, uh, varsity baseball and JV. I also assign baseball for a lot of schools in the area, including Homestead. And the last thing that I do is training for officials. That's both new officials coming in and our current officials. I keep them up to date on the new rules, how we apply the different rules and talk about different scenarios or situations. I'm a high school football and wrestling referee. I've done wrestling for 22 years and football now for 13. I basically run meetings and I take phone calls. I help new officials. I mentor. My favorite part of that is the mentoring side of it, probably because I'm a teacher. Many officials work almost every night that their sport is in season. 
With the responsibility of making correct calls, they also have to stay up to date on new rules and enforcements when officiating. Spectators, players, and even coaches that heckle the officials are becoming an issue towards the IHSAA. With officials having to deal with disrespectful patrons, they opt out of continuing the position, making it much harder for sports to find people to officiate the games. There is a shortage of officials in Indiana, so they're doing a lot of campaigning now to get officials signed up, get a mentorship program going. It is difficult, especially for younger officials, because you do deal with some, you know, unruly fans and coaches. But, you know, the benefits, you are helping out the sport, you're making a lot of pocket money on the side, and you get to be around a sport that you pretty much should enjoy if you're doing it, you should enjoy that sport. As we're getting older, I mean, we got guys that are retired and getting out. So we need more of the younger generation to be able to step up and kind of fill in for, for those guys that are. Males, females, we, we use them all. So, I mean, it's we need gymnastics, we need swimming, football, baseball, all the sports, track and field. I mean, we, we could use anybody we can get. Although the fans may be discouraging, there are many benefits to being an official. After working for several years and gaining experience, the best officials from each year are chosen to officiate the state finals for their sport, a huge accomplishment for some. To become an official, the rules are simple. The IHSA has a, a real nice initiative of giving free licenses to anybody that wants to start officiating. They really just need to go to the IHSA website and, and there is an officials tab on there and it walks them through how to sign up. They hook them up with a local mentor. It's really a truly rewarding profession if you can handle it, if you can get through it, and, and most can. We just want people to continue to try, give it the effort, and it always will get better. On top of all the officiating duties, all officials agree that there is one thing that is the most influential part of the job. One of the most important things that, that we do as high school officials is we understand that we have a role in education-based athletics. It's not just go out and call them ball strike, fair foul, a safe out. It, it also means that as we go out in the field, we work with the coaches and we make sure we display appropriate adult behavior. And in fact, it's a great way to be a positive example and influence on the players and showing them the appropriate way to handle conflict resolution. You know, I, every call I make makes somebody happy, it makes somebody mad but to, to realize that there's only myself and my partner, the only two people probably watching the game that doesn't care who wins or loses, but our focus is to make sure we get in the right position, we make the best call we can, and we interact with the coaches uh, in a positive way. This past winter break, Homestead participated in the Hall of Fame Classic Tournament for boys basketball. Caleb Wood is in now to bring you more details about their performance at the event this year. In the state of Indiana, basketball is at the heart of high school athletics, and Homestead High School has had its fair share of success. In 2015, the boys team made a run to Banker's Life Fieldhouse for a chance to make school history. With players such as Caleb Swanigan and Taj Curry, Homestead clinched their first IHSAA state title. Fast forward and the Spartans are still an elite team consistently ranking in the AP poll and with a future Boilermaker on the team, aspirations are high for the 2021-2022 season. Obviously you hear about the rich culture and everything it has about it, but um, coming in you hear about all the stories and all the big crowds and everything you get to play in. So my mom played girls high school basketball here, so hearing her talk about it and uh, all the cool things that happened, uh, it was something I was looking forward to. You know, I, I coached and was an assistant coach at Elder High School in Cincinnati for three years when I first got my job from 89 to 92. Uh, the crowd and the atmosphere was very good there. It was an all-boys school. But, you know, Indiana basketball, prior to especially class basketball uh, being brought in, I think that was in the 90s, um, it just was what everybody did. Um, everybody went to, everybody was a part of. It was, you know, something as far as, you know, the community got involved with. Um, you know, Indiana basketball is always going to be uh, close to my heart, something that I've always enjoyed, something that I'm proud and uh, that I was able to be a part of over my tenure. This year, Homestead was given a special opportunity. The Hall of Fame Classic, an annual four-team tournament, and Homestead was selected to compete.
Yeah, obviously it's a big tournament that happens every year. Being able to play in it was pretty cool, but as soon as you step foot in that uh, field house, it's, you feel just a different buzz to you. It's, a real, it's really big, obviously, but just how spread out it is and how many people could fit in there is really cool. Newcastle and that gym is the mecca of you know, high school basketball sports. So, um, you know, proud to be a part of that. Uh, never been in Newcastle Gym until that day. After opening in 1959, the Chrysler Fieldhouse at the time was the biggest and finest high school gym in the world. This icon of Indiana basketball has been home to the 1973 Mr. Basketball, Kent Benson, and 1983 Mr. Basketball, Steve Alford. And after recent seating additions to the main concourse, Newcastle Fieldhouse remains the largest high school arena in the world. The venue has hosted the Hall of Fame Classic for 44 years, and since 1990, 16 participating teams have gone on to win the state title. Guys, this is exciting. I mean, you, I mean this is something that hopefully you'll remember for the rest of your life. I mean, this is something that everybody, for the most part, in Indiana basketball dreams of being a part of. Get the crowd to show that you are here to play. We're home set back. And welcome live from the granddaddy of them all, Newcastle Fieldhouse, where we're getting set for the morning matchup in the Raymond James Hall of Fame Classic as the 4A number 10 Cathedral Fighting Irish faced off against the number eight Homestead Spartans. Swing gets in the corner, takes a three and downs it. Offensive rebound, Kapwiki, his three goes. Try to get yourself out of the corner in here because they're gonna double team. Go. Hey, All right. who did they double? The guy that they double off of, home for the ball. Fast break shot over, Andrew Leeper blocked. Layup on the glass, good by Fletcher Warrior. Nice play, 32-26, Irish up 40 seconds left in the first half. 4.9 seconds left, gives it into Lawyer. Quickly crossed timeline, contested jumper. He somehow got it with one arm. What a wild shot by Fletcher Lawyer. And that's how the first half ends. Cathedral up 32 30 over Homestead. Guys, good half. Have a seat. The FY, we only had 11 stops out of 26 possessions. 11 we're stops. Only, we're only down to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're right there, fellas. All right, first play, uh, three out of bounds in the Clipper. Okay. Cathedral wins 62-50 over the Homestead Spartans. And the Fighting Irish are moving on to face Westfield in the Hall of Fame Classic Championship. We knew going in it'd be a tough, tough matchup against us for against Cathedral, but um we knew in between games, we actually went to the Hall of Fame, uh, got to see some cool things there, but uh, we just knew we'd have to come out and come ready to play to get the second win, um, come third, but uh, we did what we had to do. And welcome to game number two for Homestead in the Raymond James Hall of Fame Classic as the number eight Homestead Spartans of Class 4A face off with Connorsville. Tip off goes to Homestead. Thought about a T3, he'll take it. Yes, sir! Fletcher Lawyer unconscious from beyond. 533 left in the first. As Homestead gets a win here in the Raymond James Hall of Fame Classic. They showed out and then some and defeats Connorsville 62-33. These first 12 games uh, were against some of the best teams in the state of Indiana. Okay, we did that for a reason. It's been a dream of mine to be a part of that. Uh, I've been in, you know, coaching for 30 some years, a head coach at 28 years and then five years as an assistant. Uh, never was able to be a part of, uh, you know, this event. You know, we had our opportunity this year to be a part of it, and I'm, again, proud to be a part of that uh, prestigious event. It's something not many people get to do, obviously. It's a really cool field house, and uh, it's a really cool experience not many people get to do, so we're not going to take it for granted. But playing in a big gym like that, um, that's a high school gym, is something different, but uh, it's a really cool thing we got to be a part of. From Newcastle Fieldhouse, thank you for joining us today through these two games. 
As we wrap things up, you can see that football and basketball have been highly influential to Homestead students, and these benefits are even more recognizable at the national level. American sports are such a large part of our country, providing entertainment year after year. That is why we are so thankful to have them back again this year. After all, it's about time we honor our sports that are uniquely American. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jenna Lane.